Hello and welcome to the McDonald's Happy Readers Holiday Story Club. Today is going to be loads of fun. Have you ever thought about what you would do if there were no grown-ups? Just imagine you could do anything you wanted. Sleepovers on a school night, water fights inside your home, jumping on the sofa with your shoes on. Well, that's what my next story is all about. Come and join Izzy and Benji on their next adventure in the time traveling van. And if you've read any of my other stories, you might just recognize where they end up. No grown-ups allowed. Meet Izzy and Benji. They're just like you, except they have a magical time-traveling van that can take them to all kinds of amazing places. What exciting world will they go to this time? What would you do if there were no grown-ups around? Jump on your bed, watch TV until your eyes went fuzzy, stay up until way past your bedtime and never go to school again? That sounds amazing. But what would happen in a place where there were never any adults? Where there were no grown-ups allowed? Would it still be fun? Or would it be a disaster? Even more disastrous than that time you called your teacher mum by accident. Well, a girl called Izzy is about to find out. She's pretty much like you, except that she happens to have a magical time-travelling van. Izzy's grandpa left the van to her when he died. Gramps had always told Izzy incredible stories about his adventures, and she thought they were just that. Stories. But stories are powerful. And stories are are magical. And sometimes the most powerful, magical stories of all also happen to be true. Not long after she got the van, Izzy accidentally pressed the button that turned on the van's exciting worlds mode. And that's when her adventures really began. The van magically froze time, stopping it still and whisked her off on all kinds of adventures. She never knew where she'd go next. As well as her van, Izzy also had a Benji. Benji was her little cousin. He was staying with Izzy's family for six months while his mum was working in Greece. Benji was loud, accident-prone and sticky. But to Izzy's surprise, it had actually been quite fun having him along on her adventures. Right now, however, Benji was in a great big sulk. But why can't we have a sleepover in the van, Auntie Sophie? He moaned. He was wearing his blue dinosaur pyjamas and holding on to a dinosaur patterned duvet, which was trailing on the floor. You let us do it last weekend. Izzy wasn't in a great big sulk exactly, although she really did want to have a sleepover in the van too. Like Benji, she was wearing her pyjamas, although hers were covered with a starry pattern. There's loads of room, Izzy said, trying to persuade her mum. The van was made for camping, so it had a sofa that pulled out to become a bed, and Izzy had decorated it with fairy lights and cosy cushions. It was probably nicer than her real bedroom. Mum sighed. It's not about the room, Iz. It's a school night, and you're not camping in the van on a school night. Now go upstairs and brush your teeth. Benji opened his mouth to argue, but Izzy caught his eye and shook her head because Mum had used the voice. You know the voice. Your parents definitely have one. I think mums and dads collect them at the hospital along with their new babies. It's the no nonsense, don't argue with me, conversation closed, I said no voice. It's almost as bad as the eyebrow. As soon as mum used the voice, Izzy knew it was no good arguing. Come on, Benji, she said. But my pillow's already in the van, he complained. Go and get it then, you two, but then straight back inside, Izzy's mum said. There's the voice again. Yes, mum, said Izzy. Yes, Auntie Sophie, Benji mumbled. They went into the garden and climbed inside the van, which was parked in the driveway. Sorry, Benji, Izzy said. We'll ask again another day. Now, get your... Hang on, where's your pillow? In my bedroom. Benji grinned, but since we're here, we might as well go on an adventure. Come on, Iz, the van can bring us back to this very second, so Auntie Sophie will never know we've gone. Izzy laughed. Her little cousin had a good point, and she did like the sound of a quick adventure before bedtime. 
Okay, she agreed. Yes! Benji dumped his duvet on the sofa and scrambled into the front seat. Izzy climbed in next to him. They both buckled up their seatbelts and Izzy pressed the exciting world's button. Then she started the engine. There was a blast of freezing cold air and the sound of ice cubes rattling in the pipes. And they were off. The van zoomed backwards off the driveway and the houses and streets blurred as it moved magically through time and space. Then all of a sudden, it stopped. That was quick, Izzy exclaimed. They looked out of the window at a town square. It was a normal looking for now town, not a medieval castle town or a Viking town full of straw huts and people wearing big horned helmets. In fact, it looked quite like the town where Izzy lived. Izzy and Benji climbed out, looking around curiously. In the middle of the town square, there was a sign that said, Welcome to Whiffington. Underneath, someone had scribbled something else in bright yellow crayon. Izzy couldn't quite make it out, so she took a few steps closer to the sign. It read, No grown-ups allowed. Boo! came a voice from behind the sign. Izzy jumped. She'd been on plenty of adventures, and on some of them she'd met hungry dinosaurs or slimy, squelchy creatures that lived under the bed, or aliens from a distant world. This time, however, the creature that stepped out from behind the sign was... Can you guess? It was a girl. It's a girl, said Benji. The girl stood in front of them dressed in an old, dirty wedding dress, which trailed along behind her. Heart-shaped pink sunglasses and a heavy gold chain around her neck. Ha! I couldn't help it, she said, laughing. You should have seen your faces. Who are you two, anyway? I'm Izzy, and this is Benji, Izzy said. I'm Ella, the little girl sang. What are you wearing? Benji asked, wrinkling his nose. Benji? Izzy elbowed him, but the girl just laughed and swished her dress. What, this old thing? Oh, it used to belong to Mama. I've had it for years, darling, and the chain belonged to my dad, but it looks far better on me. She tried to swing the chunky gold chain, which was obviously too heavy for her. He was the mayor of Whiffington, and this was part of his uniform. Now that he's gone, I'm the new mayor, she announced, pointing at a large triangular hat folded out of paper on top of her curly hair. The word mayor was scribbled in wobbly felt-tip pen on the side. I don't think that's how it works, Benji told her. Does, Ella said, sticking her tongue out. Does not. Stop, Izzy interrupted Benji and asked Ella. You said your dad's gone. Where is he? Dunno, Ella shrugged. I don't know where Mama is either. No one knows. Yesterday, the children in Whiffington woke up and all the grown-ups had gone. Vanished. Izzy and Benji stared at her. Vanished, echoed Izzy. Yes, and it's brilliant, cried Ella. She twirled around like a princess, then skipped off down the street. Do you think all the grown-ups really have gone? Benji asked. Only one way to find out, said Izzy with a shrug. She and Benji looked at each other, then followed Ella. You wouldn't believe the state of Whiffington itself. What do you mean you would? Now, okay, check this out. The houses were so messy, they looked like they'd been decorated for Halloween. Loo paper hung from the branches of every tree. Windows were flung wide open. Sofas had been shoved out into front gardens and there were children jumping on them with their shoes on. One house had the entire contents of its living room spread out on the roof and another had the entire roof stuffed into the living room, including the chimney. It was as though all of Whiffington had turned completely topsy-turvy. Ella had told them the grown-ups had only been gone since yesterday, but already the town looked like a scene from a disaster movie. It was a complete mess, but it was also sort of fun. As Izzy and Benji watched, a group of kids ran out of the nearest house, whooping and cheering and throwing water balloons. Water fight! one kid yelled. Which side are you on? a boy asked Izzy and Benji. His black hair stuck up in tufts and he had blue streaks down both cheeks. Red team or blue team? Uh, blue? Izzy guessed, pointing to Benji's blue pyjamas. Great! The boy gave them both a huge handful of water balloons. Get the red team! 
Suddenly, the red team burst out of the bushes and there were water balloons exploding everywhere. Izzy and Benji shrieked and laughed as they joined in. There were no rules and no one to tell them off. They ran through the houses, throwing water balloons inside. One girl went to her bedroom window and dropped water balloons on anyone who passed. Soon, everyone was breathless and out of balloons. Blue team wins, yelled the boy who'd given them the balloons. What now, Ralph? Another kid asked him. Whatever you want. Don't you get it? With the grown-ups gone, we can do anything, Ralph said. I want to camp in the van, said Benji excitedly. You got it, Ralph told him. That gives me an idea. A sleepover at my house, everyone. Yay! A load of kids cheered. We can tell spooky stories, one boy suggested. Yes, Benji grinned, and stay up really late. Let's do it, Ralph led the way. They all piled into Ralph's room, which was blue and decorated with racing cars. More and more kids came into the room, all dragging in duvets and sleeping bags. There were three kids in Ralph's top bunk, five in the bottom bunk, and loads more taking up every inch of floor. Izzy and Benji had to squeeze in to find a place to sit down. Someone passed around a torch and they told scary stories, holding the torch under their chins to make themselves look spooky. After a while, lots of the kids started to look tired, but no one left. Instead, they curled up and went to sleep where they were. Izzy wondered if they were really having a sleepover because they were too scared to go home and sleep on their own. I don't understand what happened to the grown-ups, she said to Ralph. People don't just disappear. Don't ask me. I don't know, he said. But something about the way he said it made Izzy's eyes narrow and look at him sideways. She was sure Ralph knew more than he was saying. Finally, Izzy noticed that Benji was yawning his head off. <sighs> we should go to bed too, she told him. It's almost morning. You're not a grown-up. You can't tell me what to do, Benji mumbled, but he stood up and followed her back to the van. It was creepy, walking around in the middle of the night. Without any grown-ups, everything felt a bit spooky. Izzy pulled Benji into the van and shut the door. Inside, it felt as familiar and safe as a warm hug from Gramps himself. The van will probably wake us up with a beep, and then we'll have to go home, Izzy said sleepily as they curled up on the sofa bed under Benji's dinosaur duvet. The van always let them know when it was time to leave an adventure by beeping its horn. They had to go before the third beep, or they'd be stuck there forever. Good night, Izzy said, shutting her eyes. But Benji was already snoring. Hmm, do you believe Ralph? I'm not sure if I do. Join me tomorrow to find out where the grown-ups in Whiffington have gone. I can't wait. See you then.